Okay, so according to Stat Counter, almost three percent of people use Linux on their computer. But you know what? All of them are fairly happy. It's not resource hoggy, unlike Windows. It's stable and treats your hard drive like an SSD. So if you're thinking about switching from Windows to Linux, which Linux distribution should you choose? Well, the choice is not as simple as Mac and Windows. There are n number of Linux distributions like Peppermint OS for entry level laptops, Manjaro OS if you are into gaming, Kali Linux for network and security analysis, and yes, Ubuntu, the gateway to Linux. So on that note, this is Pratik from TechWiser.com, and here are the best Linux distributions you probably didn't knew about in no particular order. Ubuntu is the gateway for most users to Linux. and it's legit if you try linux for the first time you'll face a lot of problems and with the community ubuntu has you'll find answers to all of them it is based on gnome environment and basically debian based but the focus is on gui over terminal you get a good enough file explorer app drawer browser office suite etc and if that's not enough you can download most popular software from the app center like you do with pc and mac but you might know all this stuff so what's new well Ubuntu 19.10. With it, you get NVIDIA drivers built in the ISO, so you don't have to go through the fuss of downloading it externally. With that, Steam games and other games get better. You also have dark mode, native media sharing, screen sharing, with a bunch of software updates. And if you have the hang of Linux, I would recommend you a flavor of Ubuntu called Kubuntu. It has the KDE suite of apps, which are just amazing. Have a look. This is KConnect, which is like Microsoft's your phone, but for a change, it works. Apart from messages and clipboard sync, I can take screenshots on the desktop and even send the file to me as well. Okay, Kali Linux. The first thing that comes to your mind is hacking or cracking or penetration. You get the gist of it. Well, all of that sounds cool, but in reality, Kali Linux is made for more advanced users who are into professional network security. Let me give you a small demo. Let us try and see if we can crack the password of this Wi-Fi. And to begin with, let's keep the password something simple, like football. So now we'll be using the Wi-Fi tool, which comes built in Kali Linux. You can even use the HCX tools, but the process gets lengthy that way. So here we run this single command, and it will display the nearest Wi-Fi along with their encryption type and if they have WPS or not, which shouldn't be enabled in the first place. Select the channel, and it starts looking for four-way handshakes or packets being exchanged with that particular Wi-Fi. It uses these packets to decipher the password, and there you go, it's got it. but this one was fairly easy now let's increase the complexity and see how it fares here we go again so here we go again and it still gets it that's amazing how about we put in some numbers and alpha characters okay Here we go again and it seems to be struggling. No, I cannot get this one. Well, moral of the story, keep your Wi-Fi password lengthy and complex. Overall, if you want to learn professional pen testing and network security, Kali Linux is the way to go. Although, do keep in mind it's not for beginners. Slacks is the deal if you want a portable PC in your pen drive. It's meant for mediocre hardware. Let me show you. This is an old Dell laptop, about seven to eight years old, with an i3 M370. And the cool thing is, this doesn't have a hard drive, broken keyboard, and bad battery. So this is the ideal candidate to test out Slacks. All I have to do is copy the ISO files to the USB drive. go to the boot folder double click on boot inst.bat and that's it it will create the bootable media for you now let's plug in this usb drive into our oldie and let's boot it now the best thing about slacks is even though it is live boot it saves your changes like if i download files or install software and reboot the system
Now, even after the reboot, I can still access this photo and game and edit it, save, shut down and carry this PC anywhere. Changes are still persistent. So I'm gonna make a bold statement here. I would recommend everyone to start with elementary OS if you have never used Linux before. It is based on Pantheon, which has an uncanny similarity to Mac OS. Yup, it looks like Mac OS and I see no harm in it. I quite like the design. It takes a day or two to get used to it, but it's really handy. But I would want to say one thing to the elementary OS team. Where is the minimize button? I mean, come on. The first thing you notice after you install elementary OS is that there's no minimize button. You don't get dark mode, no additional themes and no tweaks. No genome tweaks. But the more I used it, I understood it makes pretty much sense. This is far less complex than Ubuntu. Things are so GUI focused, I just love it. Small things like adding startup programs can be done directly, unlike Ubuntu where you have to key in the command. Another thing, the workspace switching is so fluid, I've started using it more and more. And you'll love this one. You can practically select anything and put it in picture in picture mode. Also, Elementary OS has a unique app store and I've been dying to see a good app store in Linux. So here, all the apps are open source, which is great. You also get apps for pay what you want model, which is something I've seen for the first time in Linux app store. Now, let's move to the gaming portion. Well, yeah, gaming on Linux is a thing. So the most suggested distro for gaming is Manjaro. The biggest reason being the native Intel AMD NVIDIA driver support, which is mostly not available in other Linux distros. For instance, Manjaro can automatically detect the hardware and update your graphic drivers, which is simply great for gaming. Of course, you get Linux supported Steam games, but you know, the list for Linux Steam games is quite short. But here's the deal. You can even play Windows Steam games with the help of Proton. Proton is basically wine, but for gaming. In addition to this, you can play any freaking Windows game on Manjaro with the help of Lutris. It will handle all the complexities, it will take care of Wine, all additional dependencies so you can concentrate on the game. Another popular alternative to Manjaro is PopOS. The only difference is it gets driver built in the ISO, but PopOS is based on Ubuntu, which in turn is Debian, so you get better and huge app support. But hang on, what's Debian now? Well. To summarize, most of the Linux distros are either Debian based, Arch based or Fedora based. The main difference between them is package management and update schedules. So Debian based Linux distros have the most number of packages, but they are not rolling update. So when the major version releases, you have to reinstall everything once every two to three years. On the other hand, Fedora based distros like RHEL, OpenSUSE, CentOS use RPM package manager, which have lesser apps than Debian and involves a lot of post installation configuration. Lastly, Arch-based Linux distros like Manjaro are rolling release, which means you don't have to reinstall everything and you will still be updated after every major release. Just a fun fact, Google Stadia is built on Linux servers with AMD graphics and Vulkan API. So now AMD and Nvidia needs to get their act together and start making drivers for Linux. So the future for gaming in Linux looks pretty good. Debian based OS like Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Pop OS have a huge list of software available for them. For a normal user, these Linux distros would be an ideal replacement from Windows. If you are into gaming, I would recommend Manjaro OS but Pop OS is also a good option. For hardcore power users, RHEL and Kali Linux is a good choice. And if you are new to this whole Linux thing, I would recommend to start with elementary OS. Anyways, these aren't the only Linux distros out there and if you are a Linux user, let me know in the comment below which distro you use and I would give it a shot. So on that note, see you soon.